Hi friends and happy almost Halloween. I figured that I would be able to squeeze in one more witchy and Halloween type of book before the end of October. So I needed to find another audiobook. I was about to go on a drive for a couple of hours and figured there would be no better time to see what was available on Libby. So while I was scrolling, lucky for me, I came across The Lost Apothecary. Now I had actually wanted to read that one for a while. So I figured I'm going to give it a try. I've got some time to waste in the, t in the car. Your girl loves an audiobook. Let's see how we like it. Lost Apothecary is a story about a female apothecary who sells poisons to women to liberate them from the men who have wronged them. This book is set in 1791 in London in a hidden back alley apothecary shop. And our main character, Nella, was once a very well-respected healer. She has a really good understanding of medicines and plants and how to use them to heal the body but now she uses that knowledge in a much darker way. She sells well-disguised poison to women who would literally kill to be free of the situations that they're in. Nella awaits her next customer, but she is shocked to find out that her next customer is a precocious 12-year-old girl, and her and Nella form a friendship but that friendship jeopardizes Nella and the apothecary shop, and it also jeopardizes all of the women who have come to Nella for her services and who she has logged in her apothecary journal. This book is set in a dual timeline. So the other character that we are reading about in this story is Caroline Parswell, and she is in London in the present day, but she's actually traveling to London on her 10th anniversary, but she's going alone. And if you're wondering why she's going alone, that would be because she found out a few days before her 10th anniversary trip that her husband was cheating on her for months. So she decides that she is going on that dream trip to London by herself, and she does. And then when she gets there, she decides that she is not just going to sulk around her hotel room. She is going to go exploring. So she is out and she is exploring and she is walking by the River Thames and comes across an old apothecary vial, one which she can't help but to investigate. I forgot to mention that she was actually an aspiring historian. That is what her passion was before some events in her life and before she got married. So she is renewing this want inside of her to research something and she starts to research this vial that she found and comes across some articles of the old apothecary murderer. As she continues her search, her life collides with Nella's and with Eliza's. And Eliza is the 12 year old girl that I had mentioned earlier, who became a customer at Nella's apothecary shop. And as Caroline continues to do her research, like I said, their stories collide, but it's a collision that not everyone survives. Now that you know some about the book, let's get into my thoughts. You guys, I love this book way more than I was expecting to. Also, I really love the cover of this book. It is so beautiful. I kind of wish I would have purchased this at some point, and I still really want to just because the cover is so pretty. But I'm trying to be reasonable around here. So free audiobook it is. But this book had everything that I was looking for to end the month of October. It was witchy. There were magic and potions, aka poison. And it was just really entertaining. I also really loved the bond between female characters in this book and how strong all of these characters were.
I usually love a dual timeline story and that was the same for this one. So I just really enjoyed that on one hand and in one chapter we were reading about Nella and what was going on with her experiences in the apothecary shop and all of the things that she was facing and then in the next chapter we would read about Caroline and her research and she's trying to put all of the puzzle together and at some point those stories intersect and we find out what happened to the apothecary murderer. Oh, something else that I wanted to mention and tell you guys as something that I liked about this book was that there was a map and on the map you could see where Nella's apothecary shop was and you could see present day London and where Caroline was and where she was researching and where she found the vial. I am such a sucker for a book with a map or a book that comes with any extra material. So yes, something else that was so fun that I found while researching this book was that the author, Sarah Penner, talked about how she came up with the idea of this book. And she shared about how pre-COVID, like right before COVID, I think, she was in London and she was exploring and she was doing mudlarking in the River Thames and how that inspired ideas for this book. And I just love that. It kind of makes mudlarking sound cool. I don't know if it is, but now I want to do it because what if I think of a cool book about a female apothecary shop? I did also see in my research somewhere that Fox is going to make a TV adaptation for this book. Not sure if that's true, but I'm here for it. I think it would be a fantastic show. Bring it on, Fox. Four dislikes. I'll be honest and say that there's not anything that I need to pull out as a dislike about this book, which doesn't mean that it is the perfect book. It just means for me that it was exactly what I was looking for and delivered on everything that I read it for. So I listened to this one because I really wanted something. I wanted to squeeze in one more thing before the end of October that just brought all of those Halloween vibes. So it had a chilly atmosphere. There was magic. There were some things going on that just really made it feel like Halloween to me in this book, Halloween and fall, which is exactly what I was looking for. So if you have the opportunity to squeeze in one more book before the end of October, I would highly recommend you give this one a try. And so with that, for my final review, I'm going to give this one three and a half stars. Now that does sound a little bit low, but it's not. I like to reserve four and five star ratings for the books that really invoke some serious emotion or just really make me think about things. And this book was never intended to be that way. So that's why it scores a little bit lower, but it is still a fantastic book. So like I said, if you are looking to squeeze in one more fall witchy magical book, give this one a try. I cannot even believe that it is almost November. So I will be back soon with some cozy fall books to share with you guys and to review for you. As always, I really appreciate your support. And down below, I have some links in case you would like to connect with me on Goodreads or TikTok. I have been posting quite a bit on TikTok, so I would love for you to interact with me there if you are interested. And I do also have a link down below to Book of the Month Club in case you've been interested in signing up. You can sign up with that link for a discounted price. I will see you all in the next video. Bye.